drive-in movie experiences have become quite fashionable of late, largely thanks to the pandemic. This year in the UK, we've gone from having just three to over 40. And this got me thinking. It'd be a great way to test a selection of new micro-projectors. So I've set up an exclusive drive-in movie night under the stars in classic convertible cars, complete with popcorn, snacks and a very special guest star. This is James King, a renowned film critic who has his own movie show on ITV2. He's a regular on the radio circuit too, and his three favourite films are Grease, Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Donnie Darko. Now, the aim of the exercise this evening is to test these three micro-projectors. Do you have any experience of those? Uh, no, I have a regular projector. And, and the advantages of projection for you are? You want the image to be as big as possible to feel as immersive as possible. And uh, a projector has really changed my life. It's completely changed the way that I watch movies at home. And the three projectors are the Kodak Luma 150. It's the smallest and the cheapest. Next up and a bit more expensive is the ViewSonic M1 Plus. Finally, and most expensive, it's the Anker Nebula Apollo. To find out which is best, I've set up a little award ceremony, and my first gong is for best production design. Which one of these mini movie beamers has the best features and looks the slickest? First up, the Kodak. Now, all of these projectors have similar connectivity ports, including the all-important HDMI socket, so you can watch TV or movies through them. Now, like all of all of these, it's a 480p resolution, although you can feed higher resolutions into it, up, up to 1080p. Yeah. And uh, it claims to support up to 150 inches of screen wow, size. Wow, that's a big screen. It is. The, the, the others only uh, only claim 100 inches, which will be interesting to see how it performs. It also is the dimmest in terms of light output. Next, the View Sonic. This one has a very nice big Harman Kardon speaker on it, doesn't yes, it? So you'd expect the sound to be good on that one. It also has a, a useful stand. Oh, built in, OK. This ViewSonic M1 Plus also has Android built in, so you should be able to watch through a Netflix app rather than actually transferring other content uh, through, through the inputs. It's got a bigger light output, uh, although they're only claiming that it'll support a 100-inch screen. OK. Finally, this is the Anker Nebula. It's the most expensive of the three. It also has the brightest light output, and it also has a, a, a version of Android, so you can use uh, streaming apps. And All three of them support screen mirroring, so if you want to cast something from your phone, it's a relatively straightforward thing to do. So, on first impressions, James, which uh, aesthetically do you like the best? Um, I'm going to go for uh, this one, actually. The ViewSonic. The ViewSonic, yeah, because I like the size of the speaker on it, but I also like that built-in stand. That's very mm. chic, that's very sexy. So, the View Sonic wins for best design. Time for the second award, best long-form feature. And for this test, I want to see which projector's battery lasts the longest. Well, this is quite the setup you've got here, John. Decent battery life is obviously important. There's no point inviting everyone over for an al fresco viewing of the Irishman if it's going to cut out halfway through. So I've set each one up to play an animated logo on a loop until they run their batteries from fully charged to flat. Well, I'll be honest, John, you invited me to a drive-in movie. I thought I'd be watching something exciting. This is the worst film I've ever seen. Yes, no, it's very functional, though, and it ensures it's an even test. This shot goes from dark to light on a constant rotation so it imitates the transition from light to dark scenes. So far, they've been going for 90 minutes, but which one will stay to the end of the credits? Oh, look! The Kodak's gone oh. off! What's the time? One hour 40. Ooh, that's just long enough for me to watch Dirty Dancing. Not wanting to stand around in the drizzle, James and I head off to get some movie snacks. Ooh. Oh, look! Oh, yeah. The view Sonic has gone off. What's the time on it? Uh, three hours and ten minutes. OK. That's mm. long enough to watch Avengers Endgame. Well, that means the anchor's definitely the winner. That's true. Mm. Should we go and watch something more interesting? Let's do it. Mm. One clock wipe later, I can reveal that the Nebula Apollo lasted a whopping four hours and eight minutes. That's two lots of Back to the Future. Great Scott! And it wins our award for the best long-form feature. Now wouldn't be the best time for the heavens to open. 
but they have anyway, and it's tipping it down, putting paid to my plans for an open-top drive-in cinema experience. So, I'm having to change the script, on the hoof, much like Spielberg did when Harrison Ford got a tummy bug while filming Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, rather than separate cars, we've found cover for just one, this beautiful AC Cobra replica, to assess the final category, Best Picture. And what better footage to show in this all-important category than a car chase filmed by Otis? A few weeks ago, he got to hang out with some top-notch filmmakers and used professional movie cameras and drivers to film an epic car chase. And I've got my hands on the director's cut. It's the perfect way to test just what these projectors can deliver. It's packed with speed, colour and awesome cinematography. And we're starting with the Kodak. What are your first impressions? Actually, my first impressions are this isn't bad at all. The colours are perhaps a little on the grey side, a little on the muddy side, but again, pretty good. So, all in all, I'm quite impressed. And you can hear the sound coming out of the actual projector itself, and that obviously is a little bit on the tinny side, a little bit on the quiet side. Overall, though, I, I like it. I know that the unit itself is very small and compact. It looks good. The picture's pretty good. And it is the cheapest one here, but maybe the others are going to improve on it. Next up, the ViewSonic. The colours are a lot punchier. That's the first thing I noticed. I'm not sure if the clarity itself is that different, but definitely you can see the green of the grass and the blue of that, of that Porsche there. And the sound as well. The sound is very different. It's much louder. One thing the ViewSonic has done the Kodak uh, didn't do is it's, uh, it's aligned itself automatically uh, to the yeah. screen. It's done that sort of tombstone thing so you get the uh, picture perfectly in alignment. That actually makes a real difference in, in the setup, doesn't it? Mm. And finally, the most expensive on test, the anchor. The, the first thing I notice actually is the colours look a little artificial. That's almost fluorescent grass. And overall, I think there's a very green emphasis to the picture. That looks like glow-in-the-dark grass. Yes. That, that, <laughs> that does not feel particularly realistic, and that's really quite off-putting. It doesn't seem as loud as, as the ViewSonic, in spite of the fact on, on paper it should be louder. Yeah, no, the ViewSonic definitely had a better uh, built-in internal speaker. There seems to be a clear winner. The ViewSonic, for me, was the best one. It had the best visuals, the most natural colours, and a really good loud volume on there as well. Mm, yes, I, I'd, I'd agree with you. So it's the View Sonic that scooped the coveted Best Picture Award and won two out of three gongs tonight. It's certainly top of the box office in our tests.